Backdrops for client work in today's episode of When Will I Learn? reached out to me the other day for some editorial and some lifestyle shots. Once you've got a shoot like this scheduled and they've sent you the products, you can start work on the prep. This client is based in Austria, so all our prep work is done over the phone or using email. The sharing of images in this particular case is sort of mood board style images, shot list, and then any specifics like, you know, orientation that the images need to be shot in, things like that. The specifics of this shoot were pretty straightforward. Basically, they wanted to carry on the visual language that we've already created, but they wanted a brighter look for spring. The first thing I do when I get a request like this is I look at the backgrounds I have in stock. So that is a huge folio of A1 paper. I have backgrounds that I've made, I have backgrounds that I've collected, which you've seen before in other videos. Once I've got a good idea of what I've got in stock, I look at the mood board images that the client sent over and I start to put together a Pinterest board. Pinterest is a great resource for stuff like this. I've got boards with generic inspiration, but then I've got client specific ones. Oh my God, the flies out here are horrible. If I feel like there's anything that I want for the shoot but I've not got, I'll usually head to the local art shop and in Manchester that's Fred Aldous, fantastic place. For this I picked up some extra foam core, some black, some white and some grey. That's mainly not used for backgrounds, although I did use it for one backdrop. The foam core is mostly for bouncing light and restricting light, things like that. One of the shots in, in the list I needed a white sort of floor that someone could sit on, walk on, that I could shoot them from above. So what I did for that was I got some MDF and I just painted it with matte emulsion really really simply. In fact that's what I was doing in the intro to this video, just literally just painting it with matte emulsion. It's the most straightforward thing you possibly do. But it's great having just big sheets of MDF because they make pretty good backdrops. You can paint them, you can reuse them. If they get dirty, just repaint them, or you can build them into something more interesting, which is what I also did. Kind of like to throw out a wild card when it, whenever a client shoot comes in that, that needs backdrops, because I really like making them. I went with a technique very similar to the one that's in this video that you've seen before, but I was also inspired by Joni from The Bite Shot. What shaking bacon. <laughs> and what she did was she, layered a darker colour underneath with a lighter colour on top. So same sort of polyfiller, filler, um, spackle, joint compound, whatever you want to call it, that same material just plastered on but then painted it, out, painted it with dark first and then the light and then kind of went in with some spray paint and then went in with some oil, uh, some acrylic paints and just kind of weathered it uh, so if you've ever seen anything about prop making when you when you have a, um, a prop gun or something for a film you need to make it look older there's some really great res resources online that you can learn about stuff like this but basically what you do is you add oil paint or acrylic paint light washes into the cracks and then you wipe it off and it it just deepens textures basically oh my god these flies the wildcard background didn't actually get used in the end, it just kind of didn't fit for what we were doing, but it's something that I've now got and I can use again and again. You can repaint it as well, so if if it needs to be a different colour, that texture will remain if you paint it again. You can paint it a lot of times before that texture is going to uh, start to fade, which is what's great about these kind of backdrops. So the stage between making the backdrops and actually shooting the final things that is the back and forth that you have with the client. 
and in in this case I did some test shots basically got the products that I was actually going to be shooting and I just put them onto these backgrounds shot them chose the ones that the colors were kind of going to match that were going to look good together didn't bother putting any props but I did light it in exactly the same way that I would be lighting the final thing which is pretty key because things can look pretty different if they're lit differently god right I recorded this whole thing back at home in the studio sans flies but I missed some crucial points out and now I'm having to do it as the sun's going down with these flies eating me away I'm going to cut to the footage of me actually making these things because this is this is enough for me this is this is it detail check out this video I explain it better there I also forgot to film a couple of little bits in this process and there's a couple of things that I did that I probably wouldn't recommend that I've sort of left out but they don't really make sense but as I say you get the idea check out the other video moving on At this point I've done the shoot, the images have been sent back to the client, they're happy with them, they're using them already. What I'm going to do in the next video is I'm going to show you a little bit of my process when it comes to these flat lay product shots. I'm going to show you what my setup is, the tripods, the gear, the grip that I use, the lighting that I use and really kind of deep dive into it. I'm going to go through a mock client shoot and talk you through the whole thing. But that's enough for this video, I'll see you next time. I feel like I should be like, shuffling papers. <laughs> <laughs>